Hey folks, Phil the Bee Man here. It's uh, it's not that nice a day outside, so I'm doing uh, did my school work in the morning, and now I'm thinking about beekeeping a little bit in the afternoon. And I thought today would be a great day to start thinking about uh, explaining explaining indoor wintering, which I know for most beekeepers in the world, even if it's an option, it's not a necessity. I'm not even sure it's a necessity. There are folks, including uh, my grandparents, who wintered their bees outdoors reasonably successfully for many years. There's bees that are, are going to make it through this winter. Manitoba's having a, a traditional Canadian winter, uh, which we haven't really had much of for the last decade or so. So, and if I'm looking, I'm looking out the window all the time to see where the next gust is coming from. Um, so, you know, we're having, we're having a real serious winter here. It's been lots of overnight lows in kind of the kill zone of, you know, minus 25, minus 30, uh, daytime highs, not crawling much over minus 15 Celsius. Um, you know, people have, have lost their lives trying to walk, uh, from and getting lost and so on. So, winter's a, winter in Manitoba is a serious thing. But there are beekeepers. I know of some who, who winter their bees up outdoors. Uh, they typically will wrap them in some insulation, make sure they're in some pretty decently protected sites. And often those sites will fill up with uh, snow. You get a bit of a windbreak, and then the snow kind of piles in, and those hives end up being kind of under the snow and protected from the worst of the cold weather. Snow becomes a bit of an insulator. So it's not it's not like you have to winter your bees indoors. I think that's maybe uh, where I'm coming from in this. So why would you want to? It seems like a lot of trouble. Haul all those bees home and then you got to haul them out. And next this spring of course with this extra snow I'll be looking at you know some pretty major days of trying to get snow clearing done to get places to put the bees off the drop 1500 hives on the ground not on top of snow banks so um, you know this is not not going to be easy but so let me I just want to take you my thinking through on this so why are we wintering our bees indoors and let's just let's just look at the numbers if you were to say and uh, whether it's one hive or or a thousand or 1500 if you wear them outdoors, you're going to have to wrap them up. So you got to have, you know, I, and I check some prices on what commercial wraps are, and you could probably do it cheaper if you if you traded your own time for money. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, 25, 30 bucks uh, for a commercial hive wrap, uh, as much as, uh, well, I saw, you know, one. One place that was selling uh, I th what I think is a pretty nice looking hive wrap for four hives wrapped together for like 140, 150 bucks. So that that's where I get that $35 range from. If you're wrapping them individually, maybe a slightly higher cost, but you're probably not wrapping that many. Um, and you'd have to compare that against the cost of having a building. You're going to I think it's at least double to winter your bees inside for that upfront cost of just the, just the insulation and the, and the building. Um, so it's not like it's cheaper. Uh, it probably you know might be comparable in the long run because of course all the insulation, which is the main thing you're putting in these hive wraps, is going to have a you know a lifespan. Probably a wrap lasts ten or twenty years if you look after them before the mice eat them up and they get rotten or, or too wet and too crappy. I don't know. I haven't really dealt with it much, but I suspect it doesn't last forever. You put that same uh, value into a building, you know, that's not going to last forever either, but it's going to be you know, a life cycle of 20 to 40 to 50 years instead of 10 to 20. So if you think that that building has last twice as long as your temporary wraps, then actually the money works out pretty even. When you compare survivability, 
Um, I think that, again, you know, it's not like it's a slam dunk. Um, your mileage is going to vary on this. Um, some people have had terrible luck putting these inside sheds, and, and let's face it, your risk is all in one place. Get all those bees inside, then you have fire or some other catastrophe. It's all your hives versus uh, a disaster striking at one or two apiary sites. So the the risk is up. You want to make sure you have insurance on, on those hives. Um, I think really the survivability is going to come down to the hives that barely make it through. Um, so I always have about 10% of my hives that I would grade as weak in the spring, but they made it. You usually lose about 10%, another 10% typically squeeze through. And, and weather like we're having today would just uh, cull those out really early. So if nothing else, those hives that you know, barely make it through indoors by sort of having the share heat of all the hives around them. Those are the ones that you would lose if you were entering outdoors. The outdoor hives tend to have a slight advantage um, in that they go out and they're, you know, instead of being put out uh, into you know, a bit of a shock uh, when spring comes, they're wrapped up and they're all spread out in their sites. Um, they often have the insulation left on them for a month more than mine would be inside. So they have some kind of a, a more gentle spring, and those strong hives might come back. So, um, you know, like I'm, I'm super happy wintering inside. I think I have pretty good survival rates, but I'm, I know of beekeepers when they're outdoors who do just as well. So uh, now whether do as well on a winter like this that's kicking our asses um, in a normal winter. We'll, we'll find out in the spring. We'll ask around in the spring and find out what uh, people are getting. So then it comes down to, well, what's the beekeeper's preference? And there's it's work either way. There's no way of getting around it. If you're going to wrap no. those hives, no. you have all no. sort of cold no. soil to get out there get that, those insulation wraps on, get those hives all wrapped, everything tied down. Uh, pretty experienced beekeeper knows that no matter how well you think you have those wraps uh, set up, you're going to throw a brick on top of every hive or you know, wind like we have today just tears things apart. Uh, so, you, you know, you, there's a lot of work and care in getting those wraps repaired. And meanwhile, I'm busting my tail um, getting my hives home. That wrapping work can be done kind of in a more gentle way, right? Because you got you can do that as you want. Once the hives are fed, you can start wrapping up. There's no timing to it in the way that uh, you know, we guys that winter indoors have to judge pretty carefully. There's no warm days left that are gonna make the bees fly, but uh, before it snows or you're in trouble. So, you know, there's a bit of this hauling the, uh, the bees in is always a pretty delicate judgment call. It takes me about 10 days to do it, so I've got to you know, correctly predict uh, weather more accurately than the forecasters do. So, it's, uh, you know, in Manitoba, the kind of, I think, as bad a climate as you're going to get for beekeeping. I think it's up to the beekeeper. I'm, you know, I made my choice. Uh, I think that uh, some of the things that are factors for me is that building that we're thinking of as a cost for the hive uh, as a wintering building, you know, is also my hot room. So I would have had to have it anyway. Now I have to have even more storage space because that is like a, bee a hot room could be very well be the beekeeper's wintering space for their supers or it could be their heated uh, workshop right so because I'm using that building for my bees I have to have additional space for a workshop additional space for for storage but uh, that that building isn't single use it's not like a building a beekeeper's in a weird wintering building 
and use it for nothing all summer. It'll, it'll have other purposes on your farm. So that's a bit of an offset for me. Um, is an advantage in terms of managing your bees? Well, I'm, if you've watched some of my other videos, I'm trying to figure out how to use it more wisely to, uh, to manage my bees. Honestly, it's not that easy. Because you're trying to cram 1,500 hives into, a, into your hot room, uh, everything's kind of layered in there, and it's not like you can get in every hive. So they're all stacked up, seven pallets high, you know, only a certain amount of space. I can get at some of them with the forklift, but not all of them. So the idea that you're going to be managing your hives while they're indoors, I think, is not practical. Um, so you know, that's not an advantage. Uh, hives that die inside tend to be nice and clean. Uh, you know, be starve and then dry right out. It's very arid inside a wintering facility. You know, humidity is 40 to 50 percent. And there isn't hot and cold cycles that are trapping moisture inside a hive. Uh, an outdoor winter hive that's in trouble often gets very moldy and gross and, and makes a real mess. So if you do have uh, wintering losses, they're way nicer to clean up from uh, indoor wintering. Uh, also, your equipment doesn't take as much abuse. My boxes with my bees and my lids are all inside dry for six months a year, and they last a long time. The equipment would be, have a shorter life cycle if I was wintering outdoors. Wintering inside really is only an option if you have commercial sizes of, of apiaries. That's that's not really true. You could winter any number of hives inside, but uh, the way it's done by a commercial beekeeper where the bees are the heat source, you need a critical mass of hives to make that work. If you put one, if I put one hive inside my hot room, it would, it would freeze because that one hive can't produce enough heat. It's not just being out of the wind and the weather, it's, it actually has to be warm. And there's been lots of good research on optimal temperatures. It seems like about 40 Fahrenheit, 5 Celsius is kind of the sweet spot. Too much warmer, they get too active, uh, too cool, and then they can't feed themselves. So there's, there's a sweet spot there. So, but you need enough bees to keep a building or you'd have to invest in supplemental heat. You know, uh, for a smaller beekeeper, that's probably not impossible. Have a little corner of a building that's insulated off with some supplemental heating. Uh, probably affordable. Probably your honey would pay for it. Um, if anyone has ideas about that, I'd sure love to hear about it. It seems to be possible. Um, but typically in, in our area, Indoor wintering is the beekeepers with the larger numbers looking, and also then you have the forklift and the various uh, processes to to bring those hives in quickly in the fall. Now, if you're doing it by hand, I did that for lots of years, lifting hives, stacking hives up on top of each other, and driving them home on a cart. Um, that's a quite a bit of uh, energy. If you have. By the time you have enough bees to winter inside probably have some sort of mechanical uh, machine or process to handle those hives. So now if you have only a few hives wintering outdoors, get them out of the wind, keep it sheltered. Uh, being buried in snow is okay, probably even preferential. Uh, get them wrapped up and then probably check them fairly early in the spring and if they are dead you know, get those things cleaned up before it gets terribly uh, wet and miserable so uh, you know, that, that once those things are moldy it's really not very nice it's, that comb can be damaged maybe maybe so uh, there indoor wintering indoors outdoors i don't want to tell anyone what to do I don't want anything in my videos to be me saying there's only one way to do things. Uh, I just wanted to, to show you uh, my thinking about indoor wintering. It's not like it's a slam dunk. It's not like it's easy. Uh, and uh, But it does work for me.
So I'm going to maybe make a couple more videos on how I winter indoors, uh, show you my setup, and uh, maybe explain them uh, in more detail. And I have some early videos in, on my setup, but I think I was speaking mostly to beekeepers that already knew what they were doing and wanted to compare to their own. I'll, I'll try to walk it through a little bit more carefully for people that are just getting going on this process. Very good, everyone. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.